Now, a lot of people that have been critical, different groups within the church and without the church that have been critical of the mass as it is post Vatican II, um, they've pointed to specific things within the mass. Like for instance, the fact that before, before the council, the priests during the liturgy was facing away from the congregation, as opposed to now within the new mass where the priest faces the congregation. And uh, I mean, we've been discussing how the true spirit of Vatican II was not to make the church all about human beings and to forget about God. It was in fact, to refocus us in a new world in a, in a new era of human history on the Lord, on Christ Jesus, our King. So when it comes to details like that, the, it could seem symbolic that the priest is now facing people as opposed to uh, facing towards the East, facing, pulling us and leading us towards heaven as the traditional symbolism would be. Is that even a result of Vatican II or is that, that innovation, is that something that was outside of Vatican II? There is not a single word in the sacred constitution on the liturgy about celebrating the mass versus popular with the priests facing the people, not a word, zero. Uh, that is all a question of post-conciliar implementation um, that I think uh, should be resolved in a both and rather than either or way. Okay. And I've, I've written at some length about this. Um, uh, when we are as priest celebrant or bishop celebrant and congregation pondering together the word of God and the liturgy of the word. Yeah, we face each other. We face each other. When it's time to celebrate the liturgy of the Eucharist in anticipation of the return of the Lord in glory, we should all be facing the same way toward the returning Lord in glory, which means we're all facing uh, the same way. That's not the priest turning his back on the people. Right. That's the entire people, people of God, priest, bishop, deacons, folks, facing uh, the coming kingdom, which the Eucharist is in anticipation of. I find that when this is properly prepared and catechized in parishes, people actually like it. Um, uh, because one of the problems that the the, free, the so-called freestanding altar uh, has created, which was absolutely unanticipated by Vatican II, is that the personality of the priest celebrant became the crucial factor oh, in yeah. the celebration That's of Mass. And one of my colleagues who's not in the office here today, his wife, says you can tell in the first minute, what kind of mass it's going to be. <laughs> no. <laughs> True. Uh, because of how the celebrant behaves. Now, it is perfectly possible to celebrate a dignified, beautiful uh, Eucharist versus popular. I, I don't have any quarrel with that. It's done in my parish every Sunday. Uh, I do think that a certain richness of, of biblical understanding, Jenny, which is what you express, that we, uh, the Eucharist is a reminder, uh, it's an anticipation of the Lord's return in glory. And that, that message is really lost when we're in this circle. Um, uh, this is going to take some while to sort out, obviously. Uh, but uh, I think eventually we will come to this both and resolution of this question. Uh, but there is absolutely not a syllable in the, in the Constitution on the Sacred Liturgy about the orientation of priests and people of Mass. Your Grace, do you have anything to add to that? I, I think the, the piece of wisdom that George shared there was take time to sort this out. We've got a lot of people with very, very strongly held opinions on either side. Um, let's make sure that we do take a look at it, look at it very closely, look at it together as a church, not just one parish versus another, not one diocese is another, but come at this together as we are, the common people of God, because it is the liturgy, which is our 
common heritage. It's a, it's the common unifying point. Um, study it deeply and allow that time, allow that time to sort it all out as to what is the best way to move forward in terms of the way we celebrate the liturgy.